Miss Honey's story. We mustn't hurry this, Miss Honey said, so let's have another cup of tea, and do eat that other slice of bread. You must be hungry. Matilda took the second slice and started eating it slowly. The margarine wasn't at all bad. She doubted whether she could have told the difference if she hadn't known. Miss Honey, she said suddenly, do they pay you very badly at our school? Miss Honey looked up sharply. Not too badly, she said. I get about the same as the others. But it must still be very little if you're so dreadfully poor, Matilda said. Do all the teachers live like this, with no furniture and no kitchen stove and no bathroom? No, they don't, Miss Honey said rather stiffly. I just happen to be the exception. I expect you just happen to like living in a very simple way, Matilda said, probing a little further. It must make house cleaning an awful lot easier, and you don't have furniture to polish or any of those silly little ornaments lying around that have to be dusted every day. And I suppose if you don't have a fridge, you don't have to go out and buy all sorts of junky things like eggs and mayonnaise and ice cream to fill it up with. It must save a terrific lot of shopping. At this point, Matilda noticed that Miss Honey's face had gone all tight and peculiar looking. Her whole body had become rigid. Her shoulders were hunched up high and her lips were pressed together tight and she sat there gripping her mug of tea in both hands and staring down into it as though searching for a way to answer these not-quite-so-innocent questions. There followed a rather long and embarrassing silence. In the space of thirty seconds, the atmosphere in the tiny room had changed completely, and now it was vibrating with awkwardness and secrets. Matilda said, "'I'm very sorry I asked you those questions, Miss Honey,' It's not any of my business. At this, Miss Honey seemed to rouse herself. She gave a shake of her shoulders, and then very carefully she placed her mug on the tray. Why shouldn't you ask, she said. You were bound to ask in the end. You're much too bright not to have wondered. Perhaps I even wanted you to ask. Maybe that's why I invited you here, after all. As a matter of fact, you were the first visitor to come to the cottage since I moved in two years ago. Matilda said nothing. She could feel the tension growing and growing in the room. You are so much wiser than your years, my dear, Miss Honey went on, that it quite staggers me. Although you look like a child, you're not really a child at all, because your mind and your powers of reasoning seem to be fully grown up. So I suppose we might call you a grown-up child, if you see what I mean. Matilda still didn't say anything. She was waiting for what was coming next. Up to now, Miss Honey went on, I found it impossible to talk to anyone about my problems. I couldn't face the embarrassment... And anyway, I lacked the courage. Any courage I had was knocked out of me when I was young. But now, all of a sudden, I have a sort of desperate wish to tell everything to somebody. I know you are only a tiny little girl, but there is some kind of magic in you somewhere. I've seen it with my own eyes.' 